Reasons why Fujitora regrets blinding himself. One, the fact that he now gets consistently cheated when gambling. Two, not being able to see the face of the future Pirate King. And three, not being able to see the subscribe button for the Grand Line review and thus being unable to attain regular One Piece content uploaded straight into his YouTube feed. So to everyone watching this video, let's help this man out by pressing that button for him. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line review, your source for everything One Piece and more specifically, welcome to another One Piece battle where we take two characters from this vast series and pit them together in a hypothetical matchup and do our best to determine a winner as objectively as possible by examining and awarding points for the following criteria. Power, speed, durability, hockey, individual fighting styles, devil fruits, intelligence, and other miscellaneous notes. And first up in today's battle, we have a revered legend of the One Piece world, known primarily for being the first division commander of the former Whitebeard Pirates, as well as an anthropomorphic pineapple, Marco the Phoenix. Stepping into combat today, Marco brings with him a wealth of experience having served under the strongest man in the world, and he can back that experience up with one of the most ridiculous devil fruits that we have seen in the series, a mythical Zoan type that turns him into a phoenix. And standing up to Marco, we have Marine Admiral Fujitora, who very notably only joined the Marines during the time skip, and therefore did not clash with Marco or the Whitebeard Pirates during the Paramount War. However, despite his relative inexperience with the organization in question, Fujitora has rapidly risen to become one of the most respected and revered Marines, with an unrelenting yet reasonable sense of justice and a paramount a type devil fruit that has the potential to simply break this world. Very exciting times ahead, and with that out of the way, let us commence the battle. And this time around, I'm going to start with intelligence, which I usually leave as one of the last categories because combatants in One Piece battles tend to be far more defined by their abilities. But in this case, I cannot ignore that we are dealing with two supreme strategists as well as leaders here. So this is very important to note right off the bat. And obviously they both have strategic experience on a grand scale with Marco serving as the second in command for the entirety of White its forces, which comprised over 1,600 individuals in the core crew alone. And Fujitora comes into this with a similar background as he wields the heretical command over at least 100,000 Marines and frequently implements operations featuring hundreds and thousands of soldiers to maneuver. So they both have very sound tactical chess-like minds. And I point that out because this translates into their one-on-one -on -one capabilities and both contestants have a supremely detailed understanding of their abilities, but more importantly, the power to rapidly dissect the capabilities of their opponents. And the only fact I feel that can differentiate these two in terms of intelligence is the concept of intellectual attrition, which basically refers to how long one can keep up peak performance under pressure. And in this case, I definitely feel like Fujitora has a leg up over Marco because Fujitora has remained calm and collected in effectively every situation we've seen him in, even in the super diaclimactic events of Dressrosa. Whereas Marco seems to be much more susceptible to allowing his emotions to take over. And as soon as that occurs, it is a small advantage, but Fujitora has the benefit of clarity. And so that is why I am awarding this opening category to the Admiral. Next, let's take on speed. And it might be initially easy to count Fujitora out of this, given that he generally presents himself as something of an immobile statue. However, his reflexes are actually pretty amazing, which was seen when he swiftly defended against a sudden kick from Doflamingo during the Dress Rosa arc. But at the same time, let's be real, Marco is almost certainly going to be our speed champion here today. As a result of his devil fruit, which we will also get into shortly, Marco is not only capable of flight, but absurdly fast flight, which was on full display during the Marine Fed arc, where Marco, had an opening clash with Marine Admiral Kizaru, who is quite possibly the fastest character in the entire series thanks to his Devil Fruit. But Marco was able to catch Kizaru off guard, which is not something to be taken lightly, pun intended, of course. And yes, Kizaru may look and sound slow, but he generally has pretty phenomenal reflexes, and that speaks volumes of the kind of speed that Marco would have needed to achieve in order to implement a winning tactic against him. Or maybe not winning, but you know, fought to a draw. And it's not so much that I don't believe that Fujitora could be that quick, but as as it is currently, he has not demonstrated anywhere near the level of speed required to compete with Marco the Phoenix. And now it's time for the all important Devil Fruit League, which is a rough one to judge this time around because we have two pretty absurd fruits going up against each other. As a mythical Zoan user, Marco becomes effectively invincible when any part of his body transforms into its blue Phoenix form. Any damage sustained will be rapidly healed by the blue flames, unless it were Haki induced. But even then that only allows someone to hit Marco. Recovering from that damage could be as easy 
easy as anything else once the hockey stimuli has been removed. And the fact that Marco's devil fruit allows him to fly should not be underestimated because it gives him superior maneuverability to pretty much anyone who isn't capable of natural flight on their own. Furthermore, Marco is almost certainly one of the best individual devil fruit users that we have ever encountered, displaying a supreme mastery of the Tori Tori no Mi model Phoenix and its transformative qualities that he can perform on a micro scale for maximum versatility. But then again, he is up against the power of the Zushi Zushi no Mi, granting Fujitora the ability to manipulate gravity around any particular area, which as we've seen can be quite expansive or quite narrow, but his range is also incredibly high and allows him to casually summon down meteors. Now the meteor part really isn't that much of an issue for Marco, he could just avoid them very easily, but dealing with gravity in general is a really tough one, particularly because Marco is a close range combatant, so to prevail in the Devil Fruit category, we need to examine whether or not his blue flames can overcome gravity. And this is really fascinating because while fire does not have mass, it is not subject to the crushing effect of gravity like solid substances would be. Meaning that Marco may actually have one of the best possible chances of fighting Fujitora than any other character in the series bar Sabo, who can also take advantage of the properties of fire. And this isn't to say that gravity has no effect at all, it certainly does, because fire is anchored by gravity, but the result is more that it changes the shape of the flames, with the correlation being the higher the gravity, the taller the flames, and the lower the gravity, the more spherical they become. But this puts Marco in a supremely unique position, because he will be fully capable of moving under Fujitora's gravitational force. And in fact, he may even be able to use it to his advantage to increase the power of his eventual attacks when he does form part of his body that will immediately become much more subject to standard human gravitational forces. So this kind of shocks me actually, but in terms of Devil Fruits alone, this is an extraordinarily bad matchup for Fujitora because Marco holds a hard counter to his Devil Fruit. And as such, this category is going to be awarded to Mr. Marco. All right, after that lengthy discussion, let us now step into hockey. And here, I believe that Fujitora has a fairly clear advantage or at least a clear demonstrated advantage. As yes, it is confirmed that both Marco and Fujitora are wielders of armament and observation hockey. But in that latter area, Fujitora more than trumps Marco. As a result of blinding himself, Fujitora has had to rely almost exclusively on using observation hockey for simple survival, as well as high level combative situations. And given Rayleigh's old adage about hockey only blooming in the thrust of battle, Fujitora's has well and truly bloomed into a terrifying flower. He has a supreme awareness of his surroundings and even the feelings of those within his vicinity. There is simply no hiding from Fujitora because as far as we are aware, no individual can suppress the aura that this kind of advanced observation hockey picks up on. And no, obviously Fujitora does not have future sight, but his hockey has gone down a different path of advancement. One that Marco cannot hope to match with what he's demonstrated so far in the series. And given that in armor, we only have very basic usages to judge from and Conquerors is non-existent, the edge in observation is going to give Fujitora the win in the entire hockey category. Durability is next and it is a very intriguing category because within one of our contestants, we have an infinitely regenerating Phoenix to examine and that is a big problem for Fujitora because Marco can essentially only be damaged with hockey infused attacks. And in many ways, it's almost like facing off against a Logia user in that regard. And it's certainly not impossible to overcome, but it is a gigantic barrier. Whereas on the other hand, Fujitora is a man who we've never actually seen take a single attack. He has managed to guard against everyone, be it Sabo, Luffy, Law, Doflamingo, whatever. Although we have seen Fujitora in a state after incurring injuries. So it is not impossible to break this man's guard. It is just super, super difficult. So on the one hand, we have a fighter with Nai on unstoppable regeneration versus a combatant whose guard is so effective that durability doesn't even seem to be brought into the equation. And I suppose one big advantage for Fujitora here is being a swordsman because a Haki infused blade is one thing that I can see being able to properly wound and perhaps even kill Marco. But of course that possibility alone is not enough to give him this category. Both Marco and Fujitora as demonstrated to us are iron walls of durability. And if these two ever were to fight, I would expect a long and drawn out match that comes down to attrition in this regard. And while I do admittedly think that puts Marco at an intellectual disadvantage, I simply cannot make that leap with durability. And so this category is going to be a good old fashioned tie. Moving to power now, and I think the strength of both Marco and Fujitora is simply first class. Going back to Marco's Kizaru example, he got the better of the Marine Admiral in his clash, providing the power to force Kizaru into an awkward ouchy retreat. And the secret to Marco's phenomenal strength is all about speed playing into eventual force. He builds up incredible momentum and then hits as hard as possible, which you know, if we weren't dealing with Marine Admirals, I would say that we would be one-shotting fools left, right, and center. Whereas Fujitora's power becomes more evident through the attacks that he has been able to efficiently repel. Most notably being a strike from Zoro and a Haki imbued gear third punch from Luffy. Fujitora has had
handled both of these like they were absolutely nothing, and it certainly does speak to his own raw power. With that said, it is very difficult to judge the very basic formula of how hard Fujitora can hit, and that's because we just have not seen enough action from him. However, what does push me over the edge is the idea that Fujitora's power is not reliant on a specific circumstance. Fujitora does not need to set up his power like Marco does by achieving that supreme level of speed. With our Marine Admiral, his power is just there, easily accessible at any given time, in any given situation, and that is why he is going to take the power category. For individual fighting styles, we have a very opposite matchup this time around, as Fujitora primarily favors standing still, whilst Marco is something of an agility king, taking crowning advantage of his maneuverability to consistently position himself to strike his opponent. So this is a very classic unstoppable force versus immovable mass scenario. You know, Marco prides himself on offense and Fujitora is the defensive champion. What I will say is as we have examined, a large part of Fujitora's defensive strategy is to make use of his devil fruit, which is a complete wash against Marco and may even work against him if it enhances Marco's attacks. So in regards to fighting styles, I don't see a clear victor. In theory, they both serve as a perfect counter to each other, which produces this profound stalemate in my mind. So sadly, this is gonna give us another one of those coveted ties in this situation. To miscellaneous stuff now, and something I would like to mention, although I won't be taking it into account here, is the idea that as a Marine, Fujitora also more than likely has access to an easy reserve of sea stone and sea stone based accessories. So if this were a situation where he knew he was going up against Marco one on one in advance, it is certainly maybe plausible that he would equip himself with such an item. So the presence of such a substance could be devastating. However, it does assume an awful lot and I'm not comfortable submitting it as any kind of evidence in Fujitora's favor, but I did just want to mention the possibility regardless. So yeah, what we have in the end here is probably one of the hardest four battles we have covered thus far in the series. And one that when I went into it, I legitimately had no idea who was going to emerge victorious, but it would appear that with a total of five points, Marine Admiral Fujitora has won the day here today, racking up a victory in intelligence, hockey power, whilst fighting durability and individual fighting styles to a draw, which his defensive style does do particularly well. On the flip side, I certainly do need to congratulate our runner up here today, Marco the Phoenix, scoring a brilliant four points, winning the areas of speed and devil fruit, whilst also tying in durability and individual fighting style. But congratulations to our Wisteria Tiger, Fujitora. But what do you guys think? Please do let me know down in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Groundline Review and I'll see you next time.